I will turn our volume up. And greetings and salutations, travelers. Welcome back to the Inn of Planar Crossroads. And welcome back to our uh, Misadventures Continued game. This is our, for those wanting to know the disclaimer, this is our kid-friendly, family-friendly kind of game that uh, families can watch or listen more accurately, listen to together, and get to enjoy a f rather sometimes silly but also fun story that goes on. Um, before we get into it, let's go ahead and do our announcements. First off, the, the Inner Planner Crossroads has its Patreon and its Subscribestar supports uh, going on, so if you want to support us in either one of those ways, you can. Our main uh, change that we're doing soon to that is we're going to be reworking the Patreon tiers because uh, we're investing in a compute, a 3D printer so that our patrons will have the chance to, of certain tiers, will be able to print certain minis and have them sent to them. So that'll be cool. That'll be good. Um, as far as anything for uh, any other things, we have our 500 subscriber one, uh, one shot that's going to be coming up because we did reach our goal. We're going to be giving away, we're going to be contacting winners soon about uh, who has won the giveaways as far as the two physical items. But also, uh, we're going to be able to put out a video with some details on uh, games and things like that that we're going to run for the one shot, or at least the options for those uh, here in just a little bit. And I believe that's everything we need to announce at the moment. Um, our next subscriber giveaway appreciation giveaway will happen at five uh, at uh, 1,000 since we've made it to 500. And it's also important to point out that uh, along with the Patreon tiers uh, rewards being changed, we're also going to I'm looking to get goals actually put on there now that people are, you know, we've got 500 subscribers, may as well have some goals set up that people can see. Uh, and I believe that's it. So, are we ready to get back into the game? Yeah? Yes. Okay. So, when last we left Caesar, he was beneath, far, far beneath Crosstown. Um, he may not even be close to Crosstown based upon how it twisted and turned. It was very disorientating. But he made his way down and down until he came to a subterranean cavern or something of a cavern, sizable cave portion that apparently was populated by dark folk. At least enough of them. They seemed to be researching a an area around them that had uh, an strange ancient looking markings and they didn't know what the markings looked like or meant but as they kind of watched for the uh, and looked for and deciphered these different things as best they could um, Caesar had transformed into a few different things to make his way down and see if he could find out uh, what was going on. He was able to impersonate them for a little while, <coughs> though he did start to arouse some suspicion. So he decided to change into one of them, uh, even changing into one of them, he, he didn't know enough about them and their culture to really emulate that part. He could do the physical part, but emulating them and their mannerisms was harder. So, uh, eventually, he was not necessarily discovered, but the, the lead, for lack of a better word, researcher, or study or scholar there or whatever he was of the dark folk had come over and kind of felt under his rags and didn't just found something that felt weird and, and so he took him into the medic and that's where we find Caesar now he is sitting on the stool with 
the doctor, I guess, of the uh, dark folk is has his back to him right now. So what would Caesar like to do? Wait, does back to him mean he's facing away? Yes. He's facing away right now. He's he he had looked at you and he was about to examine you and stuff and then you turn back to his things to to his table and stuff. I turn stuff into to, a snake. You turn into a snake. All right, you're to do this quick enough, you're going to have to roll um, and remember, you can only change into something that's a fourth of your size, and you're 15 feet tall, so it's going to be... 16. No, not 15 feet tall. You're 6 feet tall. Something like that. So, you can go into about a one and a half-ish uh, sized creature. One and a half is like... This is about a foot and a half right here. You mean like this big? High? Yeah, well, or long? Feet. Either way, actually. So I turn into a... A one and a half long, long snake. So you turn into a your average type of snake. Mm-hmm. Okay. So go ahead and roll me an alteration. You get to roll that, and then what? Alteration. Two d six. So a d twenty plus two d six, because that's how open legend works. Five, two, and five. Okay. That's 12. That's 12. Um, so, as he's kind of looking around and he starts to turn around and you're about halfway through your transformation when he sees you and he's like, <laughs> So, you hear everybody start to be like, <laughs> And now, that means we need to uh, roll initiative, basically. <clears throat> what does initiative do? It's basically an agility check. Okay. Nine. Now, look, hold on. Let's get it right. I want to make sure. Do, 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 do. There we are. It's on here. Had to get on the right page. So, it's a 9, and then a 1d8. There we go. So, Two. 9, 10, 11. Okay. So, now we need to roll. I'm just going to roll uh, two checks for them. The first is going to be for the creeper, or the dark folk that is um, in there with you. He rolls uh, 14 plus 7, so he rolls really good. Now let me make sure that... No, he's got to roll a d10, not a d4. A d8. So maybe it'll come out better for you. He may roll lower. He does. He just rolls a 14. And then the ones outside... that uh, The 14 was for him, uh, the doctor, and the leader that's outside. And then the ones up on the things roll a 22. So, okay, they get, uh, you hear a bunch of commotion. Some of those start to come down and you hear them getting close to the thing. And you're, you're, we're going to say that you've completed your transformation by the time that this starts to happen. So you, he sees you halfway through becoming a, a snake and then you hear those guys coming down and you also see him he the doctor scoots back the dark doctor dark folks scoots back and grabs uh what looks to be a surgical saw or something like that some kind of um thing for cutting that a that a doctor or an alchemist might have and then bursting in through the flaps you see the leader who's still holding his quill but's got his his dagger out too. He's like, "Hey, the wall!" And then the other one goes, "Whoa, now!" Pointing at you. And you don't speak dark folk, so. It's, uh, can I get under the tent, like slide under? Um, to get outside, you mean? Yes. Yes. So that's their turn. They're just kind of like, "What?" So it's your turn. What do you want to do? 
What's around the tent? Okay, so you want to go out the, of the tent? Yes. Okay, so as you come out of the tent, you're just going underneath one of the flaps, correct? No, I'm going out the side. Yes. So the, the flaps, there's no bottom to the tent. It just sits on the stone floor, but it's got weights to hold it down and then to hold the flaps down and then it's got something some stick or rafter support for it um so you can slide underneath those two large side flaps really easily so you just slide under one of those flaps and you get outside and you're outside and you've still got movement left but what you see out there is you definitely see them starting to come down and go towards that uh, all of those ones that you saw, they're, uh, they've got, um, little, they've thrown the covers over the glowing things again to make it dark, so it's very hard for you to see, but snakes see through smell mainly, so you can kinda get an idea that there's a lot coming. You can't they're see them, stinky. but you can smell them. Now there is light coming from the archway. Uh, that with the stairs that lead downward, that with all of the carvings and stuff, there's light coming from there. It's that really, really faint blue light, and in that light, you can kind of see them, uh, dark shapes um, starting to come towards am the Am I tent. by that giant door? Um, you're not far from it, because you're probably about 25 feet from it, and it only took you 5 feet to get to where the, um, to get to where the you're outside of the tent mm -hmm. so you could make it to the edge of the door the archway I probably know what an ox looks like right because I'm out in the where Tauros I think is what they could be called or ox Oxen like to run around yeah you know what an ox looks like you've seen plenty of them pulling carts and stuff like that why are they pulling carts? Don't they just like to jump in the grass? No, those are antelope. You're thinking about antelope. So, but yes, you you know what those look like. So you, you want to move up to the door or no? I want to move to the door while being a, an ox. An ox? Like a big bull? Ox? Or like no. an antelope? Or a, a giant... Gazelle? A bull, but it walks on two legs. You mean a minotaur? Yes. You've never seen one of those things. So, uh, you the player knows what that is, but Caesar's never seen one of those things. Has he seen a dragon? He's seen um, that type of dragon he changed into before. Flying overhead? Uh-huh. Like a cross? When he did that over the city, a little young dragon. I turn into a young dragon. Okay, that's a large creature, so you're gonna be bigger. And What's is that way? that's what you want to change into as you're moving? Yes. Okay, if you want to do it while you're moving, I'm gonna need another alteration check to make sure that you can do this and still get to where you want to be. Two d six. Okay. Nine, five, and four. Okay, what's that going to be? Eighteen. Eighteen. Alright, so you can definitely do that. It takes your major action, but you are able to move and still get to yourself, still get yourself to where you want to be. So you are basically a uh, let me make sure with your alter rate with your shape shift being five. Let me see. That's page fifty-seven is the boon focus, and forty-eight is the actual thing. So I'm closest to forty-eight right now. Let me see. Shape shift power level five. Gain flying movement if applicable. Shape shift creature potential. All right. It's a major action unless you have the boon focus. And let's look over at the boon focus, which is on 57. So that's going to be boon focus 
one. Uh, if you succeed a boom focus, any power levels by your means, invocation takes a single target access, and then you gain it, but you gain advantage two on the action roll to invoke boon. Oh, you haven't been getting advantage two on your action roll to invoke the boon. So, go ahead and roll me, uh, two more d6, because you have advantage two. Three and one. Okay, so that was 18 plus three plus one. 22. You definitely are able to fully transform. Um, it still takes the major action, I believe. If I'm if I'm doing anything wrong here in I the Open Legend system, one. you can let me know uh, in the comments below. So, Boon Focus 1, you're able to fully transform into your dragon, which means you can run off of these stats now. He has little stats here on the display for him. What's my strength? Uh, might is seven now. Um, can I push those doors open? There are no doors. Those, that giant thing. It's just an archway. It's just an arch. There's no door there. You could see down in the glow, and there's, in the very, very light glow, you can kind of see some of the stairs leading downward. There's no door. So, but that's as far as you can make it. Um because it took a major action to change into a dragon. So, is that, uh, that's about everything you want to do unless you have any kind of incidental actions you want to use or something? Um, I do not. Okay. So, they, uh, as you start to change, you go from snake right there to moving forward and then you get into this as you're starting to move this 30 feet of movement that you use you get legs and then you get bigger and then your wings grow i'm assuming that you want to be like a like a dragon you see in dungeons and dragons or did you want to be like a serpent dragon with the wings or what dragon dragon with the dragon, four dragon. legs so that can walk crawl on two legs. and those legs grow and muscle and <laughs> Um, but with you, there's not actually a bunch of cracking when you snap, uh, when you change, because uh, that's not how your body works. So there's this smooth kind of transition as you walk into this from snake all the way into large category dragon. And uh, there you go. You now have... What are, the, um, what are the dark folk like? They... Um, you see them, it actually comes back up to the, uh, the big large number of them's turn. And this space down here is long enough that it still take them a movement to get to you. And you see that they move about halfway towards you, but as they see this transformation, they hold each other back and they back. And there's enough light that you can see their dark shapes. Because apparently, um, roll me a perception, but apparently the... Uh, a dragon does not have blind sight at all, so or at least a young one. Okay. Eight, 13 plus two plus one, 16. Okay, 16 is enough to see them go whoa, whoa, whoa. and uh, I can breathe fire, right? Technically, you can as a young dragon. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you are able to see them do that. And the next, they kind of hold off and ready, get ready to, uh, fo uh, they use focus action basically to get ready to attack you or to, mainly to defend themselves is what they're getting ready to do. Uh, and then the others come out, the doctor and the, um, the doctor and the leader come out and they look over at their compatriots and then they, they're like, and then they go, oh, and they kind of stumble towards their friends. Look at that here. Are they saying retreat? They they don't advance on you, but they're holding their weapons up towards you, like whoa. So you're. It's now back to you, and you are there, and they are like. Ooh. So what do you want to do? I want to try and go further down those stairs okay do you you just go straight on down you've got 40 feet of movement now on the ground yes okay so you 
you can move 40 feet down from them or uh, you're just going straight on down or are you backing down or what are you doing I'm backing I'm backing down I don't want them throwing spears and weapons at me okay well if you want to back down you can go half speed because you're going downstairs yes half speed okay so I picture this as you kind of Snar Caesar snarls and growls <laughs> as he slowly backs down into the cavern, peeks behind him to make sure that he's coming to the right spot, and there's this glow that's still there. And you kind of go on, and they look at each other and they kind of come closer, and you see them, and, and you move. Uh, backing down, you move about 20 feet, and they advance about 20 feet. You want to do it again? They don't seem to initiate anything. They, they look at each other as you're going down the stair. What do you want to do? I go down. I go further down, if there is further down. There is further down. Is it so, like a curve or something? There, the stairs themselves do seem to curve, and you continue to go another 20 feet down. Now, that gets them to the door. They don't enter the door. They kind of look at each other and watch, and you see them as you start to, you do kind of, it does kind of curve and go down, so you do see them as you start to pass the curve. They just kind of look at each other, and... They don't seem to follow you down into this softly glowing hall. As you're coming down into this hall, it does that small turn, and when it does, you notice that the walls themselves are worked stone, similar to the stone that is on <clears throat> the floor of the other room. And it has motifs of these columns, uh, kind of like half co uh, half columns decoratively along the sides of the door with the flute, the columns, the flutes on them, and then the writing on the top and on the bottom. <clears throat> and as they continue to go down, those markings continue to be there. And slowly you start to see that those markings are what are giving off the slight to slight glow, but it is a very, very faint blue glow. Magic. You would guess so. Caesar's been Evil, around magic. dark magic. Well, you don't know. You just know that this is probably magic. So. Unless they're glow stone. Don't know. Stone that glows a little bit. It's very possible. You could... You could roll a... I don't want to. Okay, good. I want because to. you don't have any bonuses to logic or learning. So, um, or Caesar doesn't. Um, so, what do you want to do? You're still a dragon at the moment. I peek behind me. So you want to you want to try and turn around in here? No, I want to peek behind me. Okay, because you you could try to turn around in here, but it would be hard because this is not a very large you're a large creature and it would be kind of tight to turn around so you look behind you as you're continuing to back down and you have continue, i reached that curve yet you've you've come in around the curve and it's gonna it appears like it's gonna do a, another tight curve just like a spiral down i turn back into my normal size okay so I you want to. As you're backing down, you kind of start to, to revert back. I want to stop and do it. Okay, so you stop and revert back. You don't need to roll for that, because this is a form that you... This is your form. You're changing back into Caesar? Yes. Okay. So you change back into Caesar, and you kind of start to look around a bit, and it's easier to, to turn and move. So you do so. You want to go ahead and start making your I way down. I have my hoodie on. Okay. Don't want people seeing my face. Okay. Who or that? anything seeing my face. Unless they're... The town folk haven't actually see, seen Caesar's real face. That is true. So, um, you continue down then? 
Mm, yes. Okay. You kind of turn around and start going down the proper way down the stairs and it comes, it does that tight spiral. Um, and with that tar tight spiral, it starts to straighten out at the end of it. So it only does one kind of corkscrew before it straightens out. And you can see that by the time you get to the bottom, the glow is faint enough that you can clearly make out features and stuff like that. Whereas it was hard up there, it is very easy to see the, the glow here. And you can tell, you can see the glow is not just steady. At first it looked like it was a steady glow, but there's this kind of pulse to it. It's not always noticeable, but there's a... And like we talked about before, there's this ebb and flow. You could, even, you could see it up above, but here it's much more noticeable. So, that ebb and that, um, that light continues and yeah and you as you continue down you come to where it flattens out and there seems to be this short hallway before the brightness starts to reach levels of oh this is nor this is like daylight bright you know bright inside of a uh like where it was kind of slowly growing to this the ebb and flow of an in light uh, or a, a light inside of a building now as you get close you come down and there seems to be a a straight path and this short hallway has blue looking daylight pulsing um, you want to continue or what do you want to do i want to turn into that snake again and i've probably seen plenty of snakes roaming around you have now snakes go by smell mostly so do you want to retain you got to think about that. You're not going to be able to see clearly unless you use eyes that can see clearly in the daylight. What about lizards? Lizards don't completely use smell, do they? They don't completely, but they also use they may they use scent as well. Um So Could I turn into a drawer? Or something smaller than... You can. You can turn into a dark folk again, if you want to. Or you can turn into a... Um, gnome? You've seen gnomes before. Gnomes have been to cross town. So... When I have, I've only been there a couple times. You've been there more than that to hear Moon's stories. Yeah, I visit there more than just a couple times. But that I only go to the... To the silver grain, to the golden grain, golden grain in. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, just walking around town, there's gnomes there. There's lots of different races that are in cross town, and in in the entire colony, really. There's lots of different races. Um, so yeah, you you could change into a gnome, just any old gnome. A gnome I made up in my head. Okay, so just a just in, just a gnome. Um, you don't need to roll me an alteration because you're not pressed for time. So you're able to morph into that a bit more. You're smaller than you usually are. But uh, that change in perception still lets you keep eyes about you on different things. So you're watching and looking and still being able to see color and stuff like that. And you can see clearly um, as you continue down and, and go in... I you. start... Can I go slower? You can. Are you trying to be sneaky? I'm worried, so I go slower. And if there's a split or a turn, I want to stop and look. And look at the corner like I'm sneaking. Peek okay. around the corner. Okay. Well, it's coming straight down into it. Um, it's coming down into a straight hallway that's Wait. still arched and still tall arched. Um, could I turn into a Goliath tarantula? You can turn into a spider. I'm not sure if spiders see color, though. Um, they may see black and white, but, you know, I'll just stay mine. My, I'll just stay as a gnome. Okay. For now. 
So you shift into a gnome. Um, you are able to make your way down, and you're you're just going slowly. You're not being sneaky. Yes. Okay. So you continue down. Your foot falls. Um, again, they seem loud in this very quiet area. But they're not? They're not, they're not more loud than they would be any other time. You're not stomping or anything, but they just feel like they're louder than they are right now. Just cause, that's just because it's quiet all mm -hmm. around, right? <laughs> right, it doesn't seem to be like you're stomping or anything. So as you walk down these small footfalls as a gnome, you see that this archway, uh, the stone, is still that gray stone, but this blue light, this pale, pale blue light, changes the way that it looks to you. And it looks almost marble-esque, almost like marble that's, that's white and textured. Uh, not textured, but marbled with little streaks of the magic or the light, or the glow glowy stone. stuff, or the glowstone. Those seem to be or glow dust. Uh, what flare up in it, and then go down. And they, that's where that glow seems to come from. Not just from the runes, uh, and the markings and stuff on the tops. In fact, that glow seems to spread from the inside of those, to from that marbled portion to that, as it goes through and into the symbols this slow ebb and flow continues and you start to walk slowly and you see the end and it's bright right now so you can't really make out until you get closer and closer and then when you get to the end of the tunnel this this small little hallway tunnel you realize that you're coming out onto a, a bridge of stone and that bridge of stone Lead straight towards where the light's coming from. On all side, uh, on both sides around you, there is nothing there. There, it is just empty space in this cavern, and you can tell by the way that your feet sound now that it that there that bottom. If there's a bottom, it's way down there. It's so dark you can't see down there, and it's so dark that you can't see the top of the cavern. So dark you can't see the sides of a cavern. It's like walking into a black void. And this... Um. And this... Um, bridge seems to lead straight towards that light. You want to keep going towards the light? I turn into an eye eye. An eye eye? Well, you start to turn into an eye eye no, and your wait. eyes get really upset about it. So. Okay, I, I stay a gnome. Okay. But I want to turn it into something that is light. That's I'm not worried. heavy, you mean? Yes, I'm worried about that stone bridge. The stone bridge, um, when you look at it, it does not look like it's going to fall anytime soon. It looks like it's made of the same stone that has lasted for as long as that cavern, uh, that hallway has, as long as that um, cylindrical stairway has. So it doesn't look like it's going to fall. You can still change into something light if you want to. Can I turn into a snake and just cross it? And you, then turn into a gnome? If you're worried about it, yes. Which I am. Okay. Now, remember, I don't want to fall into a black abyss of nothingness. Hmm. Even though I don't think that's and there's a no, word. There's no, there, nothingness is a word. Um, there's no railings on either side. There is just this, this bridge, this stone bridge with... Okay, I say no. ...pretty much smooth, uh, a pretty much smooth area. Okay, and, I stay a gnome so I can see, and I don't slide off. Okay. You keep walking further, and, um, it comes to one of those ebbs in the brightness of the light, and you realize that as you're getting closer, this bridge is probably a hundred feet, maybe a hundred and a hundred and fifty feet. And it is at the end. There's this column that looks a lot like the columns that were carved. It seems to lead down into the darkness, 
and it has runes on the side uh, markings or writings and runes on the side of it but it's flat on top and right there in the center of this pillar at the center top of the pillar so you have the pillar top and it's right above in the center is floating in space a what looks like a stone disc that has on its edges similar markings and then on the another circle inside of that with markings and then at the very center uh, 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 well in between those two circles are carvings and of people and things and then at the very center is the head of a bull and it is the the tablet appears to be it appears that it can open because there is a crack in it that's letting in li letting light come out of it but the crack is not one of like it's breaking but rather that it's coming apart on purpose type thing instead of being broken it is just coming into pieces that it ought to always or could should open to i try and what do i what happens if i try and open it well and I, if I... as you approach you see that it is not small i'm just using my hands as a reference for you it is not a small disc it is the size of a house that's how big this pillar is that you're that this leads out to and is you're standing on you're standing on the top of a giant pillar and that circle that disc is as big as a house would be and those markings and that motif and those carvings there's both huge carvings in between the two concentric circles and also smaller carvings in between those larger people do you think the black the black, dark folk have been down here do i think that um they didn't follow you down probably not it's it's up to your interpretation on that one maybe they're scared of the pillar falling maybe I mean, what if the pillar falls and the whole place comes crumbling down? You don't know. You don't know if they've been down this far. Um, but the, all the light that's pulsing seems to be coming from uh, this crack that is in the disc itself. And as you get closer, you can see that other parts of the disc also seem to be cracking. Or also, not cracking like breaking, but coming apart like a puzzle comes apart like like a puzzle you twist and turn right but it's it's flat like a disc so that's what you kind of see and that light's just coming out little bits at a time and it, with that flow as i get closer does it seem like i can go in it the crack's not big enough to get into if the, uh, not in your current form, if that's what you mean. Can I just um, run into a, a, a long snake and get in? Possibly. It would... It would really depend on... How big is this crack? The crack's about the size of the... It's a similar to problem to what you had with the door. Um, uh, at the Golden Grain, trying to get in there. So... It's possible, but maybe, maybe not. Uh, you have the the space that you're working with here is that this pillar is probably the pillar that all of that you're standing on now, and that the disc is on and glowing above. Um, all of that that pillar is probably a good eighty feet across, and it's eighty feet one way and eighty feet another, so it's eighty square. So it's a square it's long, pillar and not a round pillar? The, the pillar itself is square, and then the disc is floating above it. You, uh, There's no carvings on the top of the pillar. There is magic involved in this. That's a fair and 
Just assumption, yes. Magic is the only thing that can make things float, except for zero gravity. Don't know. Um, so you, you kind of are able to, to look at this a little bit. Make me perception check. That's going to be that one. 1d4. 1d4. Those are sixes. D4. A four and a two. It's What's not that? very good. It's no. a six. It's a six. So, you, um, you don't really hear it until, until the blade comes into your back as something goes and stabs into your back. Your little gnome back at this point. And it is the dagger of as you turn around a dark folk has followed you. It seems to be the leader. And I turn into a dragon if I can. Okay. And I smush him. Okay, so that means combat is going to happen. So you... No, I don't <clears throat> squish him. I was just joking about that. Okay. Well, you can. It's up to you. But first... Because I'd be a big dragon, and he'd be a small person to me, and I'd go... Well, that depends if you can hit him or not. He's pretty dexterous. So... That means that it is combat, but that also means that it's time to cut this episode. Dun, dun, dun. And then we'll do an episode after yeah. this. We will. We are well, going to record the next episode right after this. So session three, uh, session four, should be mm -hmm. coming up soon for you guys too. Marathon. But, well, small marathon. Two two sessions. Five but, sessions. Um, That'd be a marathon. I believe that's everything for now. And we hope that you tune in to see what is going on with this floating disc and the magic coming from it and all the things that are going to be going on with it. As always, have a great day. God bless and enjoy. Bye. Tell them bye. Bye. This content was made possible by travelers and viewers like you. Thank you.